Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on the Mindstorm Minecraft server development series. In this video, I'm going to teach you about commands. Welcome back everybody. So hopefully you're enjoying these videos so far. So far, I've shown you guys how to create a Minecraft server using Mindstorm and also how to do event listeners so that we can listen to when things happen on the server and then also run some code when those things happen. Now we're going to move on to something else that's pretty exciting, which is commands. Now, hopefully you know what a command is, but whenever you join a Minecraft server, you can run commands like slash help, slash kill, slash tp stuff like that right you can do slash maybe slash send message and normally within minecraft servers you have things like plugins that will add new commands to servers so if you've ever played like a faction server with your friends then you're going to see a lot of different commands on there versus like a creative server or a survival server for example the thing is though with mindstorm there are no commands at all not even the vanilla command so if you do slash nothing appears and there's no slash help, which is like the most basic command that you could always do. And that, of course, goes with the theme of Mindstorm, where everything is, you know, blank slate and you can add whatever you want. So that's why I'm going to teach you guys how to make commands with a Mindstorm server. It's pretty easy, actually. The API is really cool. So when you create your commands, you're going to be creating classes for each of the commands. So I highly recommend you make a package called commands. So new package called commands within whatever your base package is called. OK. So in that folder, you can just add all of your commands and you could have sub packages if you want, if you want to organize your commands further. So I'm just going to add a new command, a new Java class. We're going to call it the fart command. And then you just need to do extends command from Mindstorm. There we go. And now we just want to create a constructor for this class here. So we're going to do public fart command. And something that we have to do is do super. And then to this, you can provide the name of the command as well as optionally some aliases for the command. So the name is required though. Um, the name will just be fart, right? So you can do slash fart. That's what the command would be. And then if you want to, you can add a var args list of uh, aliases, which are just another way to run the command. So we could do like poot or toot. You can add as many as you want, okay? So now with this alone, we have a basic command that we can run using slash fart or slash poot and toot, okay? But it won't actually work yet because we have not added any executors or syntax. So that's the first thing that we want to do. We want to add something called the default executor. So set default executor, and then you can do control space to autocomplete and then press tab. This will create the Lambda for you. And then within this, this is the block of code that will run whenever you run just this base command here slash fart. Okay. Or any of the aliases. So to this, you have the sender and the context. The sender is the person who ran the command. It's a command sender. If you do control Q, this can be the player. If it's a player on the server, you run the command. It could be the console if you run it in the console, or it could be a command block, stuff like that, okay? So usually it's going to be a player, though, obviously, right? But whenever you need to do something player-specific, you would cast this to a player, all right? And then the context is just, as it sounds, the context of the command. So you can grab information about the command from the context, like the command name, the input, just basic stuff like that, okay? But let's focus on the sender. Let's test this command out by sending the sender a message. So we can do sender.send message, and we could say whatever you want. You could say, you farted, stinky, so gross, right? So again, this will be the code that runs whenever we run the command. But specifically, the default executor is the code that is run when either there are no arguments provided or nothing matches. And you'll see what I mean by arguments in a second if you don't know what I mean. But for right now, all this means is that this will be the code that runs whenever you run the base command just slash fart. And that's all we need to get started to actually test this out. Now what we need to do though is register the command. So go back to your main.java and just scroll down to the bottom or just wherever you want to put it. And we want to go ahead and do minecraft server dot git command manager dot register and then you want to pass any instance of the command that you just created so this is going to be new fart command there we go so now we have registered our command with mindstorm and mindstorm will take care of doing all the stuff behind the scenes and now we could use the command on the server though to test it out so let's go ahead and restart and let's see what it looks like okay i'm on the server now and so right away if you do slash and do f you can see that it's auto completing fart for you so the command is definitely added to the game uh, it's now available for you to use and if you press enter it says, you farted, stinky. Damn, you're nasty. That's the most basic way you can create a command, just with no arguments. So that leads to the next question, what are arguments? If you don't know, arguments are just information that you pass into the command as you're running it. So for example, if I want to fart five times, I could do slash fart, then five. Five would be the first argument, but in certain commands, you'd have more than one argument. So these, this would be like one, two, three, four, five, six arguments to this command here. And I would use these arguments to do different things. So let's take a look at how we can use arguments when we create this command here. So currently this is going to be for slash fart, 
But if we want it to be where we do like slash fart and then an amount, for example, like amount, then we need to declare a different syntax for that. So the first thing that we want to do, though, is declare the actual argument itself, define what the argument is and how we're going to, uh, what the data type of it is going to be. So we're going to do var fart amount arg is what I'm going to call it. And then we're going to do argument type dot. And then you have all these options here. So what's really cool about Mindstorm is that whenever you're doing commands, it automatically knows the type of the argument. It tries to match it correctly based on the type that you're you know, selecting here. So basically, if I was to make a command slash far and then the amount, then I would want to select argument type uh, integer, for example. So where's integer? There we go, integer. And all we have to do is just give this a unique identifier, an ID. And we're just going to call it the fart amount. So now we have to find the argument that is going to be part of this new syntax that we're adding. So let's go ahead and add that syntax. We're going to do add syntax, control space to complete this. This is going to be the actual code that is run inside of here, similar to how we did it up here. But then after that, so put a comma after the closing curly bracket, put all of the arguments that you want to be part of this command here, this, this syntax here, okay? So now we have two different syntaxes technically. We have the default executor, which is when you do only slash fart, and then you have slash fart and then the amount. So this is whenever you provide a amount argument as an integer, and this will be the code that is run for that, okay? So what we wanna do is get the argument from the context, right? So we wanna get the actual integer uh, that was passed in as an argument to this command here. So we wanna do int fart amount is equal to context dot get and now we just tell it what argument we're trying to get, which is the fart amount arg that we created above. So now that we have the actual value that was passed in with a command, we can do whatever we want with it. So, so just as a test here, we can make a for loop. Let's just do fart amount. So it's going to loop however many you know times that you pass in as an argument. And for each iteration of that loop, we're going to do sender dot send message. You farted stinky. And then we'll print out, we'll add on the, uh, the index as well. So we know how many times it's iterating. And that's it. So I'll go back and explain this in a second, but let me go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like first of all. All right, we're back on the server now. So if we do slash fart by itself, it's still gonna do that one. So you farted stinky. But now that we have a different syntax where it accepts an argument, if we try it again and press space, you can see that it's suggesting an argument that we can uh, put here. So the fart amount. So let's just say we do five and then press enter. There we go. So you farted stinky, zero, one, two, three, four. So what we're doing first is we're defining an argument, which is an integer, which is the fart amount. And then we're adding a syntax along with that argument, or you can add as many arguments as you want. And this will essentially match the command that you run. If you provide an integer to it, it will match to the syntax here, okay? And it's smart enough to know the data type. So for example, if I go back to the game here, I do slash fart, uh, you know, Bob, this does not match our syntax, right? So the first argument has to be an integer, right? the fart amount. So as long as you have a number, an actual integer, it will work. If you have anything other than an integer, like a string or a double, it will not work. It's really smart. That's what I really love about this API, this command API, because it knows it can handle those data types and validate them for you and match it to the correct syntax that you want. So basically what we have here now is two different ways to run our command based on what they provide to the command when they run it. So if they provide nothing to the command, it'll just run the default executor, which is just this message here. If they provide the fart amount to the fart command as the first argument, then it'll run this code here, okay? However, if they also just provide a different argument that doesn't match the syntax here or any other syntax, it will still run the default. So like I said before, Bob is not valid because it's looking for an integer, not a string. So if you press enter, it'll just print out the default executor, okay? So the default executor is for the base command as well as if it doesn't match to any syntax, okay? So let's see another example of how we can add another syntax. Let's just go in and separate our arguments up here. So we'll do fart target. So let's say that you wanna have a command that allows you to fart on somebody as well. So we can do argument type dot string. And like I said before, there's a bunch of different data types down here. Like this is really cool. But let's just do a string, right? And we're gonna give it a name. So we'll call it the fart target. And now if we wanted to, we could add this fart target alongside our fart amount. And what this would do is match to a command that looks like this. So slash fart amount and then target. So it'll only match to this if you provide the amount and the target. If you just provide the amount, it won't work, right? Because you need both. It's just smart enough to know that. However, I just want to add a different syntax that only includes the, uh, the target. So let's do slash fart target. And let's do add syntax, control space to autocomplete that lambda there. Now let's actually try grabbing it. So we'll do string target is equal to context dot get. 
And then now we want to pass in the argument that we're trying to get, which is the fart target. Let me fix that. And so now that we have the fart target, we can run whatever code we want to run for this specific syntax. So we'll just say something like sender dot send message. You farted on target. Very rude. Yeah, don't be farting on people, guys, unless you want to. Um, so after that, we can go ahead and add the fart target as the the required uh, you know argument for this specific syntax here. Make sure you don't forget that because you know it needs that to be able to match it correctly. Um, but yeah, that should be all we need. So let's go ahead and rerun this and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna do slash fart. That still works. That's the default executor. And then now, if you press enter, you can see that you have two different options for this. Oh, wait, I never updated it. So if we go back here, you can see that I still have two here. Just make sure you remove that one. Hopefully you caught that yourself. Okay, we're back, so we'll do slash fart. Still works there. And then now when you press space, you can see it has the fart target and the fart amount as two different options for the arguments that you could provide. And now because MindStorm is so smart, depending on the data type that you provide, it's able to match to whatever one that you need. So if we do slash fart Bob, it will match to that specific syntax that accepts a string. So it'll say you farted on Bob, very rude. That's what I did, very cool. But then if we provide an integer, so far, let's say 200, it'll run you know, our for loop 200 times and print out that message. So it's able to, so I just wanna really you know, hone down the point that it's able to match to a specific syntax depending on the data type, which is, to me, that's just really cool. And yeah, that's how you can make a basic command using uh, MindStorm. Now I wanna show you guys how to make just another command so we can get enough practice down and show you a few other things. So we're going to do, instead of the far command, we're going to do the set health command, which will allow you to set your health manually. And the first thing we're going to do always is do extends command from MindStorm and then create the constructor. We don't need this though. We just want to pass in to the super the name and any aliases if we have any. So we're going to do set health as the actual command itself. So slash set health. And we don't really care about any aliases for this one, so we don't have to put it. So what I want to do is just add a argument. So health amount, health amount arg is equal to, sorry, I can't type. Health amount arg is equal to argument type dot integer. And we're going to call this health amount. And then now what we want this to do is basically the command will be slash set health and then just an amount. And then that's going to be one through 20. So we'll validate that. I'll show you how to do that. So to do that, because we're using an argument, we're going to add a syntax. So add syntax, just like that. Complete the lambda here. And also make sure that you specify the argument that it should expect. Now, the first thing that we want to do is extract the argument. So we're going to say new health is equal to context.get health amount arg. So we're getting that health value from the argument that was passed in. Make sure that it's 1 through 20, because that's the valid range of numbers for health in Minecraft. So we want to say if new health is less than one or uh, new health is greater than 20, then we're just going to go ahead and say sender dot send message health must be between one and 20. And then we're going to go ahead and return out of this, uh, basically this code block here so that it won't continue from there, okay? It won't run any, any of our logic. Or maybe we should do zero through 20 because zero means you're dead. So you can technically end your life if you want to, um, if you set it to zero. So now that we have that new health value, let's actually figure out how to set it. So sender, like I said before, is a command sender, not a player. So we wanna make sure we get the command sender as a player so that we can do set health. You can't set health on like the console, for example, right? So we can do that by doing something like this. If sender instance of player player, this is called instance of pattern matching. It's something that is available to new versions of Java. Um, so yeah, it'll just check to see if sender is an instance of player. If it is, it'll give you this player variable and then you know run this code block here. Okay. So now we have a player object that we can work with. So we can do player dot set health, and to this we can pass in a float value. Um, we can say yeah, just pass in new health like that. And that actually reminds me, since it's a float value that it's expecting, let's change our data type from an integer to a float, just like that. And then now down here, we'll change it from an integer to a float as well. So now it should only accept decimal you know, float numbers, and I think that kind of makes sense for what we're trying to do here, which is perfect. And then we'll just verify that we you know, set the health of the player by doing health set to new health. All right, so that's all we should need for this command here. Just as a recap, what we're doing here is we add the command slash set health. We're defining an argument. So we're expecting a float argument called health amount. 
And then we're defining the syntax here based on the arguments that we can do slash set health amount. And then we're grabbing the value when they run the command, validating it to make sure it's within the correct range, and then setting the player's health after, after making sure that it's a player, of course. So that's what's happening here. And you may notice though that we don't have the default executor. We have not you know, done that like we did with the fart command here. And all that means is that if it doesn't match to any of our syntaxes, or if they do just slash set health, it won't do anything, okay? That's why you need a default executor usually, so you have some sort of fallback. Um, but we'll go to main, and we're gonna go ahead and register this. So Minecraft server dot git command manager dot register new set health command, like that. That's all we need to do. So let's go and rerun this now and test it out. All right, I'm back in the server, so we'll do slash set health, and you can see it's available to us. If we do it with no arguments, nothing happens like I just told you because there's no default executor. But if we press space, we can see that it wants a health amount as a float. So we could do two because, you know, technically two, even though it's a whole number, can be a float. So that's valid. So we set our health to two. So in Minecraft, um, basically one, if you do the number one, that'd be half a heart. So that's why it's one to 20 because 20 is going to be, because two is a full heart. So two times 10, because there's 10 hearts, would be 20, all right? So we can do it again, we can set it to 20, that fixes that. We can do 19, as you can see, we can do one, we can do zero, and boom, we died. Oh, that's funny, it says Illuminati was killed by poor programming. All right, so that's just another example of how you can create a command using MindStorm. I think as good practice though, let's go ahead and add a default executor. So set default executor, do control space. And if the default executor is run, we're gonna send a message, we'll say usage, slash set health amount. So this will tell them how to properly run the command because it clearly did not match to anything else, okay? So one more thing I wanna show you guys is, you know, whenever you just do, you go up here and wherever you wanna do it, if you do control space, this will give you all of the methods that are available, you know, to this class here that is inherited from command. So we have a bunch of different things. Um, another cool one though is one called set condition. So set condition, if we do control space to complete the lambda, and basically the way that this works is whatever condition you define within here, if it's true, the command is available to the player. If it's false, it's not available to the player at all, okay? So just as a basic example here, we can do something like return sender dot has permission. We'll talk about permissions in the future. Let's just say they have the set health permission. This should be false because I have not, you know, set up any permissions or anything like that. So if we go ahead and try this out, let's see what happens. Assuming this is false, okay? If we do slash set health, it's just not available at all anymore. So that's what that can do. So whatever condition you want to put there at all, um, it'll check it, I believe. I'm assuming just as you join the server or something like that. Um, and that will decide whether or not to give you access to that command or not. But if we remove that condition or just, you know, hard code it to true even, it will be available to us again, okay? Slash set health, there we go. So we, you can also see the default executor working perfectly. And that's it. So that's all I'm going to show you guys about commands for now. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. I think commands are probably the most exciting thing when learning about Minecraft development. Because it's cool. You can make a custom command that does whatever you want pretty much. You can add, uh, you know, whatever stuff to the game that you want. So now with that, you should be able to make your servers even more complex and more fun. And stay tuned for more episodes, everybody. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you, guys. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources, but also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you want to support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below, and this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos and you can just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace